understand because uh, as we know value can jump it has to be transferred from one asset class to the next so if it is you're yeah. good at monitoring yes sir Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Not here in the interview, Jay. So yes, we're hearing you. We're hearing you, but we're waiting for the intro to start. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 One ecosystem, you know them. We know right no free nobody, but we respect everybody, and we better than everybody. So we will run with anybody. No fear, no better than we. No kind, no better than we. Step on me one and say, one ecosystem to the world, you say. One ecosystem will do something, do something, do something, do something, do something. Uno, do. Something, do something, I'm not talking. One ecosystem will do something, do something, do something, do something, uno, do something, do something, I'm not bag of lip chasing. Hey, hey. Good evening to Trinidad and Tobago. Good evening, Caribbean. Good evening, world. This is that wonderful show uh, beyond 2021 it's a fantastic show that we come to you every wednesday evening at eight o'clock it's wednesday the 18th of may 2022 we welcome one and all to beyond 2021 or fourth season episode 22 we welcome you one and all and we want you to be attentive this evening. We want you to pull up a chair, tell a friend, tell a neighbor. Beyond 2021 is here this evening. It's that show where we delve into the emerging technologies. We're talking about uh, artificial intelligence, robotics. We're talking about augmented reality, virtual reality, the metaverse. We're talking about cryptocurrencies, digital currencies, and uh, of course, blockchain technology and with me on this wonderful show as my co-host is mr Dwayne kades and also mr cliff pamela singh and we have a special guest who has been on the program before but we welcome him again this evening uh, this is none other than mr carlos gonzalez so we welcome our dear beloved brother guests and our co-host who are usually on the program. Uh, this evening, we are talking about the World Economic Forum, the Great Reset, and a cryptocurrency. So we want you to be excited. We want it to be a very engaging uh, discussion uh, what is going on in our world today. So gentlemen, we welcome you. Your opening remarks. Good evening, good evening, Brother Noel. Good evening to the viewers. Yes, good evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, glad to be here. Glad to shed a little light, you know, and help the populace understand what's going on in the world today as far as technological development and also to bring the truth 
you know, I consider myself a soldier of truth, and I want to bring that truth to the population and the wider world this evening. Amen. Yes. Brother Cliff. Yo, what's up, what's up, what's going on out there? Everything yeah. Good. Um, well, I just see myself as, as usual, a student in this thing, yeah? So uh, tonight, of course, I'll just be taking the support role. Hello, um, we have a guest, um, a guest who we are familiar with right now. So, of course, I'll just be, you know, um, chiming in uh, every so often and let the guest run away. All right, but um, I, I, I want to raise a little issue just now, but let, if it's okay, let's let's read our disclaimer first before we go into anything further now, if yeah. it's all right. Yeah. Sure. Yes, and we also we also want to, the guest to give his opening remarks. Oh. So you, can, you oh. can read the disclaimer after the guest give his opening remarks. Not a problem. Okay, sorry yeah. about breaching protocol. <laughs> Brother Carlos, let's hear your opening remarks. A Sunday evening, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in Trinidad and Tobago and the wider world, wider space, it is indeed a privilege to have this opportunity once again to be on this platform. And uh, of course, I'm looking forward to sharing my humble views, experiences, and knowledge as I've encountered it to assist in bringing a greater understanding overall as we all add our parts together to make a wonderful whole program tonight. So I'm just happy and privileged to be here. Thanks for having me in advance. Yes, man. You're welcome. Hey. Okay, Cliff, you can, you can go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, as, as I listened to the guest just now, you know, he say he bringing his, his humble views and so on. You remind me of the little NBA watching and um, Milwaukee Bucks just get beaten. The, the star players are fellow they refer to as the Greek freak. Man had a monster series, right? In fact, a lot of persons now saying he's the best player in, on the planet as far as basketball is concerned. He, that's Giannis, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And you know, he was summoned up by saying, you know, he humbled by the opposition that he played against. And, you know, he's the best player in the world and saying he humbled. And, uh, and I hear in this, uh, <laughs> Brother Carlos Gonzalez saying, you know, he's bringing his humble opinion. So. All right, so yeah, you're, you're, you're playing there to catch Cobra alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm just giving the protocol. <laughs> you're, you're, you're catching the laps and I listen to everything you're saying, boss. <laughs> I hope you're, you're listening All right. listen to it. All right. <laughs> All right, yeah, so. Okay. All right. All right, so, okay. so, so if you can get into the disclaimer. Mm -hmm. All right. Could we flash the disclaimer so it could be read? If it's okay? No, we're not, not on the screen. We're not seeing it. Okay. We are not financial advisors. This is not financial advice. Nor are we your financial advisors. The topics discussed on this show are purely for educational considerations and are not meant to be misconstrued as financial nor investment advice. Okay, so we want to thank the listeners out there, whether you be from Trinidad and Tobago, the, the extension in the region, or from the wider parts of this planet. We thank you for tuning in. We thank you for those who I had met um, during the week to, up to now who had told me, listen, they take us in on the program. Of course, my main contention is why don't you let your voice be heard when we ask for comments? But a few persons told me they take us in. So again, I want to thank you, but I, I want you all to be more than silent partners now. So I'm asking you guys to chime in. So. A couple of persons also mentioned to me that when they tell people about what we are about and this whole crypto space that we refer to, people right. tell them, you know, they still feel it's a scam and what could happen and so on. And I, I fed up here that. And I think we try to address that. We try to show how much credibility there is. All right. However, 
I've seen an issue here up to today, and I'm, I don't really mean to digress, but I think persons have to understand that we already locked into a system where we are being scammed. Have all, uh, this panel has touched on the banking system, how they take out, take your money, and how, how they actually scam you of your money because what you feel is yours is no longer yours once you hand it to them. So if you're being scammed there, but you go along with it for years. We talk about the, the education system, whereby the amount of work you have to go through. Listen, we have touched on a number of areas, all right? And how the education system needs revamping. How many of you listeners out there, or viewers, believe that the motor vehicle insurance that we pay for needs overhauling? The whole system. Yeah, you raise your hand, Dwayne. Well, listen, I raise my two hands. I saw some of you may have seen the video, it went viral, where my son's vehicle was involved in an accident. Now, he pays full comprehensive insurance through Dwayne and them, where he bought his vehicle. <laughs> Dwayne is by y'all, right? So he pays full comprehensive insurance. He was crossing the lights where it was on green for in his favor, and a vehicle broke the red light, slammed into another vehicle, slammed into him, spin him around, so obviously, and it was picked up on, on, on camera so that nobody could then come and say, listen, um, you know how people is admit liability on the scene and when they go to the, the police station to, to report the accident, all of a sudden, Details change. Well, that couldn't be changed because everything was right here on the video. Right. So, the insurance now, when they're giving them the money, which they haven't given us yet, the figures keep being adjusted all the time. Don't know what? One of the issues I'm seeing, and this is what I don't understand, the figure that's coming from the insurance company, when they did the, the damages, then they say the parts to replace in the vehicle, because his vehicle, I think, is about seven years old or something, even though he paid full comprehensive insurance, he's the only owner. Don't follow me, guys. They are saying that it has to, the parts which are to be replaced have to be depreciated by 5% every year. So because the vehicle is seven years old, it has to be depreciated by, they give you a figure, it has to be depreciated by 35% because their take is that we are only allowing you to bring back your vehicle to how it was just before the accident. Not a new vehicle we're giving you. So we can't give you new parts. So it means now that he has to find 35% of the cost because what are you going to do? Where is, is he going to drive half of a vehicle? Because 35% is almost half. So you are now telling him that he has to dip into his pocket to find that next set of money to replace the parts, which your, your company has said, listen, this is the actual replacement cost. However, because of the cost of the vehicle, despite you paying full comprehensive insurance all the time, you have to find, dip into your pocket. And until you find that money, you can't buy the, the parts. We can't give you a check. So everything is on hold. Listen, wow. right? Yeah, wow. In the meantime, there is no such thing as loss of use because you didn't pay. That wasn't covered under your terms of your insurance. It's a whole number of things. And I am saying, how many times have we asked that the ombudsman come in and, and, and look at this thing, whether you're linked with the supervisor of insurance. or So many persons have been saying, the biggest legal scam in this country has been insurance. A number of persons have said that. And I am just bringing it to light. Added to the other areas that we have mentioned in the past where we have spoken about finance that we have been around, the educational system where you've been hoodwinked, and a number of other areas we have spoken about, adding to that chorus of, 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 of topics, this mm -hmm. is vehicle insurance. And we are going to go back tomorrow and continue business as usual. Even though a number of persons, just like banking, a number of persons have said, listen, 
they hate the fact that the bank is charging them every month maintenance. They hate the fact that they're getting a pittance of an interest on their money where the bank making millions of dollars because of their money. They hate all these facts. But when you ask them, would you be willing to protest? They say, oh God, you know that's, yeah, you know that's the system we're in. Again, again, guys, I hate the system that we're in. And I'm saying that you continue to just throw the line. We are going to continue to be the financial revolution. But I don't want to steal any more thunder. We're going to take a break here because when we come back, we know our expert guest is going to be bringing humble information to you. So uh, to digest that. Uh, we await this guest, Mr. Carlos Gonzalez with Baited Bread. Get started no, no, no. Get started with your One Academy package. Get started. With your starter package. It's only $1,600 TT. Get your financial education from the One Academy. Although it's a beginner package, the information you're going to get from your One Academy starter package, you would have more knowledge than 90% of the world's population on finance for just 1,600 TT. Let's create a revolution. Let's spread the epidemic of our One Academy, One Life. Get it today. Welcome to the I've not seen it and the queue was back in. Get started. No, no, no. Get started with your One Academy package. Get started with your starter package. It's only $1,600 TT. Get your financial education from the One Academy. Although it's a beginner package, the information you're going to get from your One Academy starter package, you would have more knowledge than 90% of the world's population on finance for just $1,600 TT. Let's create a revolution. Let's spread the epidemic of our One Academy, One Life. Get it today. Welcome to the Antediluvian Native Center of Life Extension and Health Recovery. Coming from the Garden of Eden, the Antediluvian Native Center brings to you breakthrough medicines and anti-aging technologies for all ailments and diseases in the body. Nutritional therapies, naturopathic treatments, as we create opportunities of hope and celebrate longevity. And remember, the healing is from God. What am I speaking about? Do you know what is cryptocurrency? Do you know what is blockchain technology? Are you aware of what we currently face on a regular basis with quantitative easing, fractional reserve lending? Do you know? I am inviting you to come out of the financial darkness and into financial light. The only way for us to achieve that is with education and one particular type of education is what I'm speaking about I'm asking you to join the one Academy it is a financial revolution of teaching regarding introduction to finance cryptocurrency blockchain technology helping you understand the world of money and what is money what is money money is simple it is what we agree upon to exchange for goods and services if you want full comprehension Join the One Academy.
When I'm training for professional competitions, men and women always ask me for advice. To women, I say push yourself harder than you ever have before and go beyond your comfort zone. Focus on your goals. Men, if I am willing to push myself to become Mr. Olympia in 2022, then I only have one thing to say to you. Bring your full hundred. Here we go again. Okay, welcome folks, welcome back to the show Beyond 2021. We have a guest speaker with us, and just a quick review last week. Um, so we did uh, the World Economic Forum, uh, the Global uh, Great Reset, and the cryptocurrency. So we want to delve more into it to get a, a better and a fuller understanding. We saw that the World Economic Forum was founded in 1971 by Mr. Carl Schwab. In fact, Professor Carl Schrubs is a very, very learned man who founded this organization in 1971. And it's a kind of private public sector collaboration. And they believe in what is called a modern stakeholder capitalism. And they have mapped, they have measured, they have assessed every single thing on planet Earth. Trust me. And after the COVID situation, they initiated this global reset. And of course, it is considered to be the fourth industrial revolution. So we talked about the first, second, and third industrial revolution, and now we are in the fourth industrial revolution. And the plan is to bring about some form of digital money, what is referred to as central bank digital currencies. We have been talking about the digital revolution. We have been talking about cryptocurrency. We have shown you, you know, undoubtedly, uh, that this financial revolution is not going to go back. It is here to stay. And the best advice we can give you, we've been giving you it in every show, is to get with the program, get on board with the one ecosystem, get on board and adopting uh, cryptocurrency in particular. Um, so we want to continue this discussion. We want to engage you as well. We hope that you are listening, you are paying attention, and that you will call us to get further information. It's all about education. It's all about empowerment. So we just want to invite our dear brother, who is our guest, uh, third time around, I think it is, uh, Pastor Carlos Gonzalez, or we call him Brother Carlos Gonzalez, uh, this guy, is, he wears many hats. He's extremely learned in multiple fields. And one of that is uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. In fact, he is pursuing a master's degree in blockchain technology. So it gives me uh, no greater pleasure than to introduce on this show, uh, Mr. Carlos Gonzalez. So, Carlos, welcome to our program again. I want you to to give your take on what is the World Economic Forum, what is your consideration on the global reset, and of course, cryptocurrencies slash digital currencies. Thank you. Well, good evening, each and every one of you, and a welcome. Thank you again for having me on your program this evening. And uh, indeed, we are in some interesting times as we see. Uh, Tyranny take over. <laughs> Global okay. tyranny take over all around the world. And it's interesting because I actually had that same point that you identified last week that the, the, the World Economic Forum is no new entity. It is older than me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> right? It's yeah, older. Yeah. It has been in existence beyond my age. So I won't tell you wow. what my age is, but, <laughs> but I'm not far from it. <laughs> but, the is, but the thing is, is that um, this, this tyrannical team, that is my term for it, 
I call them the as the secret enforcers of centralization. That's that's the term I use. I use that word, that phrase all the time in my radio program on Then There's Crypto. That there, there is a group of people, a tyrannical team, that are considered the secret enforcers of centralization. Meaning what? Their role is for control. Bottom line, we have to be as simplistic as possible for the huh. every listener to be able to understand. And I'm going to be plain talk, bad manners if I'm allowed to do such tonight. <laughs> you may not invite me again <laughs> after. <laughs> do it, do it. Yeah, but, go the ahead, is, but the thing is, is that the World Economic Forum is a tyrannical team comprised of multiple um, enforcers of centralization. In fact, uh, before I came on this call, I was looking at um, one of the annual reports from 2020 to 2021. And when you look at the listing of the board of trustees, it, most persons are focused on Klaus Schraub, right? But uh, he, I mean, he's he's getting of age. He's he, He's going to soon retire and they're going to have other people and most people do not know the other players that are on this board of trustees within this uh organization and i just want to point out a few and more so not to call names but to let you know who they are in terms of where their role is in the world for example we have uh the we have a, a member of the, 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 the International Committee of the Red Cross is a hmm. board of trustee in the, um, what you may call it, World Economic Forum. We have the president of the European Central Bank. Hmm. We have the, chair, the founder and executive chairman of the African Rainbow Minerals. Hear the words? Hmm. Rain African minerals, talking about the gold and the diamonds and uh, all the extracted mineral resources that are in Africa. The founder and the executive chairman over a company that is responsible for the mining of these products is a member of this forum. Mm -hmm. We have the, the, what we call the Hashemite kingdom of jordan the queen of the hashemite kingdom of jordan her majesty queen al abdullah a member of the economic forum we have the president of mit as a member of the economic forum right we have the executive director of nestle the member, chief executive officer, let me put it right. Chief executive officer of Nestle is a member of this forum. The executive, co-executive chairman and co-founder of the Carlisle Group. We have the United Nations Special Envoy for Climate Action and Finance from the United Nations, a member of this forum. We have the chairman and chief executive officer of BlackRock, one of the largest investment firms in the world owns multitude of companies and shareholdings in companies. We have the senior minister of the government of Singapore. We have, we have here this one, the chairman of Siemens, S-I-E-M-E-N-S, -E -E and the chairman of Maersk, that's the biggest global shipping company. And there's so much more, that I, I, I'm just pointing out some of these. We have the Deputy uh, Prime Minister of Canada, also very big inside there. And that's why you wouldn't be surprised at the things you saw roll out in Canada through the pandemic, okay. right? Uh, we have the, we have um, the, the NIFR, the National Institute of Financial Research, the chairman. We have the, the co-founder and chairman 
of Generation Investment Management, LLP, mm -hmm. and so much more. My point is this. The World Economic Forum is not no, no now come um, team of people who just say, let's come together and we love the world so much that we want to help save it. But there is a group of people who are strategically positioned in various sectors of the world, global operations and society that covers the span, Red Cross Health, Maersk Shipping, Nestle Food Production, um, I didn't call um, um, this the bank, um, what's this bank name? And in the US, yes. Manhattan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. We have people who are the Carlyle Group. Yeah, we have people who are strategically African minerals. Yeah, we have the Queen oh. of Jordan of the United Amber Arab Emirates as well. Yeah, these are people who have particular functions and role in ensuring that the whole global operations go united in one with one focus and goal in mind. Mm -hmm. And that is to ensure that the next generation would be under the powers of these secret enforcers of centralization so that your money will continue to be centralized, your education will continue to be centralized, even your food will be centralized, your supply chains will be centralized, every sector of global and life as a whole will continue to be centralized and using the digital ID platform to as the tool and the mechanism to ensure this comes to fruition. I know that's a big, a big um, <laughs> expectation. It's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. So, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, brother Carlos. Um, so we have seen the the, the the structure of the World Economic Forum. As I said before, it is it is vast. It is all encompassing. It is extremely comprehensive. In fact, you zero in on their maps to one aspect, and it can carry you further and further and further and further. What you're really seeing, and we alluded to it last week, it's about control, right? But we want the, the, the viewing public to understand that this is an inevitable reality. It cannot go back. And this is where the world is going. How will you advise, based upon your experience and knowledge on the issues of cryptocurrency and blockchain and so on, how will you advise the viewing public when it comes to cryptocurrency and the great reset? Well, the powers that be is really hoping that men will continue to remain in ignorance, that men will continue to be uneducated, and people will not understand what is happening while they sleep. What is happening while they sleep is that there is a whole other world, whether you want to call it the metaverse, <laughs> There's a whole other world, a whole other digital realm that is coming together very quickly, very speedily. Every day I read the news that is not reported on mainstream news. We see companies like Gucci, Starbucks, right? We have companies like Walmart. We have major operations that are continually every day to get into the crypto space. When I read the news, United Arab Emirates just recently uh, announced an airline that will be now accepting Bitcoin to travel. Now, now everybody's been talking about there's a crypto crash and a crypto crash that has happened. And, and, and some people might even call you up and say, you see, I tell you crypto is a scam, Brother Cliff. 
They might call you and say, well, the see crypto is a scam because, because you know, look, look at crash. But what they fail to realize is that all that's been simply happening was a manipulation of the world global markets by BlackRock, huh. <laughs> by BlackRock to manipulate crypto, um, crypto markets to push prices down so that institutions and companies can get in on the action that we retailers have been doing since 2008 or 2009. So, so the, the global retailers, the global businesses, they have gotten an opportunity to buy in. We are seeing companies and even countries buy more. El Salvador bought a thousand more Bitcoin just last week, yes. right? So, so we are seeing countries, Mexico is the next one in line to want to go pull Bitcoin, right? We have Brazil on the, on the going that way as well. Countries and global corporations are getting into the crypto space that we small people have been telling the global populace for a number of years. And they say, you see that? I don't want to get in that. But the truth is, is that now is the time for you to join the bandwagon of the global institutions and globalists who are now seizing the opportunity that is really being set up for you. Listen, there's no other time like now where you can get into Bitcoin at this price that it is today. Because in 2021, Bitcoin was $65,000 for one, right? And so, so, so you have an opportunity to get back into the crypto now. This is, I would call this your last last breath of opportunity your last breath you know you know when when they show that person's going to die or animal going to die it takes a deep breath and then that's it this is the opportunity this is the last breath opportunity to get mm -hmm. into the cryptocurrency space because pretty soon they are going to make it very difficult for the simple man and the retailer to have access to it mm -hmm. wow and so therefore, wow. now is the time to get into the space right. because there's not going to be an opportunity. I have a comment and a question. Should I go ahead? <laughs> go ahead, sir. All right. The comment, is, the, the comment is this. If PLS was to advertise big 50% sale on all shoes, you know you go have a stampede. To get inside there. Mm -hmm. Yep. What Brother Carlos Gonzalez just said is that at the moment, compared to the past, Bitcoin, which is the grandfather of cryptocurrencies, has a 50% discount based on the price when it was at $65,000. So you're going to go rush buy a, a, something that you could look good in and it ain't gonna last for too long right because we aren't here as opposed to going and try to benefit yourself for the future by getting involved that is what we say yes and people know so so understand guys what mentality are you going to show after what he just said that is the comment that is up to the listener my question to you now, sir, is this. We have often touted that cryptocurrency came into being because it was supposed to be divorced of the fiat system. Am I correct? Correct. However, we see where, based on what you just said, and you are right, where a number of persons are showing keen interest in adopting crypto, and you mentioned Bitcoin. El Salvador, Dubai Airlines, and there are other, other areas too. Mm. So that because there is more demand and more keen interest, the price is supposed to be going up. Instead, it is going down. So quite evidently, it is contradicting what it's supposed to be in, given that market forces supposed to suggest the real price. However, this is not so. So mm -hmm. my question to you now, is it that 
the price of Bitcoin and a number of other cryptocurrencies which are running similar to Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Is it that they are manipulated just as the stocks are manipulated in the fiat system? So is it that the cryptocurrency system is no longer divorced from the fiat system based on what I am seeing? <laughs> that is my question. Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. And uh, one of the things I will say is, yes, there is an interesting, or there have been an interesting correlation showing, not just now, but even for the past few years, with stock markets and cryptocurrency. And um, some can say that it is manipulated. What I would say is that when you're on the open market, and that it, it allows everyone and anyone to be a part of a market without the demand of a uh, regulatory um, tight uh, control, anyone can buy into something and manipulate markets because it's all about wheels and uh, great buyers buy people buying up a number and multitude of amounts, whereas a smaller person is unable to do that. Wait, so wait, just, 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 just so brother Carlos. You say because it is unregulated that this can happen, but isn't the stock market regulated? And isn't there manipulation in there? Known manipulation. How they show you where if you are known to be traded on insider information, you can be jailed for that. However, a number of persons show where they walk a tight line, right? They walk a tight line and they escape that conviction, yeah. right? Yeah. Because, but, they are regulated, but they're regulated. So what, well, where, what's the difference? Well, it's, it's the same thing like the banking. You, you mentioned the banking earlier, right? Uh, when you go to open a bank account, you are given a long scroll of questions to answer just to open a bank account. Or let's even take it more practical to take, get a loan. Yet there are people and they tell you that these questions are necessary to avoid fraud and uh, you know illegal activity. Yet you would see huge companies and huge buyers using the same banking system, accessing loans, and you know that they are involved in questionable activities, and yet they are they are not. Um, no, no um, question or anything like that. The point is this, who runs the stock market is the same people who's operating it. Who's the regulatory powers that regulate the stock market is the same people who owns the stock market. So, right. so they really and truly orchestrate it to their own benefit. Mm -hmm. In cryptocurrency, it's a little different because it is still open market and still the technology still dictates. However, open markets has that vulnerable side to it where uh, at this point in time, and I and remember I kept saying there, there's a window because at this point in time, they can do this, but there's a time coming shortly where they'll not be able to do this because pretty soon, right now I think Bitcoin supply is about 18 billion. The total supply is 21 billion. Yeah. When yes. that okay. happens, when it goes to 21 billion, nobody can manipulate again. And what will happen then is all who could have gotten their hands on crypto, all who could have gotten their hands on Bitcoin, will just have to sit back and see from the year 2045 upwards just massive increases because there'll be no other Bitcoin created mind or, 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 or and, that's the, and that's the thing. Whereas with stock market and fiat currency, it will continue to be manipulated because they'll continue to manipulate supply. And once you can manipulate supply, then the markets will always be vulnerable to manipulation. So I, I hope that brings some insight there. Uh, very much so, very much so, Carlos. Intriguing stuff, intriguing stuff, intriguing information. And of course, 
we want to bring this to the public's attention because you know for too long far too long i, I i've said it to my colleagues in in chat within recent time i think we've babied the population hmm. i think that we haven't been frank enough with them to let them know that listen this thing if it's if it isn't managed properly right if it isn't if this transition isn't managed properly and if you all don't take heed all that you think that you have today could be worthless tomorrow. Doing, can, I, doing, can I intercept you? Go ahead, sir. You know what's one of the biggest challenges of our society? Digital literacy. That's one of the biggest challenges. And that's why people don't go near cryptocurrency. They go, don't go near cryptocurrency because they're still trying to figure out how to do user email. But Digital, well, they're on TikTok. It doesn't take much, maybe, to do that. I don't know. And, and but they play, remember, they play. Not, remember, remember, our society was not cool to handle right. finance. Right. They were cool. They were cool to to go to an institution to handle their finance for them. Right. But right. when cryptocurrency comes about, it talks about two things. It talks about digital literacy and now taking responsibility for your own financial activity and that is a big problem and challenge in our society today yes because for years the system has made the population dependent on the system for their welfare yeah. and benefit yes so now it's going to take a whole it's going to take a herculean effort for those same people who have been taught to be dependent upon the system for, for, for decades, for centuries, mm -hmm. to have a, a shift in mind, to be able to come to that awareness now that, listen, I am responsible for my future and the, the legacy of my family and their future, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when we who have been brainwashed, so to speak, and come into the understanding or the inner knowing of how this thing really works. And we are at pains when we are communicating with those on the outside because, um, listen, listen to this very, very common example. A lot of people are online right now playing games and, and collecting virtual tokens that have no value while this mm -hmm. crypto game that we are involved in is going on and people are becoming millionaires and billionaires and, and acquiring assets. These mm -hmm. people are playing games for free for mm -hmm. imaginary tokens. Huh. Well, Dwayne, I can tell you, now you have play to earn. You could actually play games now digitally and earn uh, valuable crypto now. So, so that, is, that is the market that's going on. It's called the GameFi economy. Hmm. And the GameFi economy is growing. <clears throat> But one of, but coming back to even you know our culture and our country and and perhaps in in other Caribbean regions, digital literacy has not been in, in it has been encouraged, but it's been encouraged as far as to make you a factory worker, right? It's been encouraged to as far as making you spend your fiat currency, to be but, it been, but it has not been encouraged. To, to, to go into, I mean, people talk about innovation and they talk about digital in, innovation and all these things, but how many really, the average man on the ground, how, how, how much exposure or encouragement is he given to make that shift? And those are the people, sad to say, will, can, and possibly become victims of the Great Reset. Yeah. Because what the World Economic Forum is banking on is those people remaining digitally mm -hmm. illiterate. They wow. are banking on you still not knowing how to handle your financial business. They are banking on that so that they can implement their next layer of control. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, on that note, perfect. Carol. Um, We hear of talk of regulation when it comes to the crypto space, right? Uh, European Union, there are discussions and talk for regulating cryptocurrency. 
Yes. Um, the Federal Reserve also um, is that is under consideration as well. Yes. Um, where, where do you see? Because the, the tendency we are seeing as a fact, uh, central banks going with uh, a digital currency, a digital currency. We have seen this as a fact in the United States, in Europe, and many parts of the world. Yeah. Where do you where do you see authentic cryptocurrency in all of that? Um, what do you think could be the fallout with this digital central bank currency? And what advice uh, will you will you give to the, the viewing public? Well, well, you see, um, again, come back to the same point, and the the idea of it being called CBDC actually answers its own question: central bank digital currency, yeah. just as central bank paper dollars in your wallet today. It's just a digital version of the same fiat system. It has, so therefore tax and regulations and all that can be applied to right. it, can be applied also to stable coins because they are asset peggings to stable coins and the regulatory uh, powers still do that. They are trying really hard. Countries have been, I've been watching the news. There are countries that have been trying to put tax on regulation, regulatory and regulations and tax on crypto. You see the report come out one week, then another week you hear they pull it back. And the reality is because of the nature of authentic cryptocurrency cannot ultimately be taxable because ultimately, uh, it's supposed to be decentralized. And anything that is decentralized cannot be controlled or manipulated by any government or institution because it is decentralized. In fact, I was at one of the virtual meetings with the, one of the founders of the SEC, one of the governors, and he said, they said that that has been their greatest challenge. Their greatest challenge is the fact that they cannot really impose tax or they cannot even come in and shut down a decentralized exchange because it is peer-to-peer -peer oriented. And on, until governments reset their laws to impose their powers into peer-to-peer -peer activities, which they are trying to do, when that happens, then your crypto will be at risk and this is why it comes back down to my point is that there is a window of opportunity here and that window is being closed daily uh, so here my maybe you might consider me devil's advocate here but don't you believe that if the government would to gain a bigger handle. So for instance, let's say they pass laws through regulations to be able to, to consider it such an asset that it now becomes taxable in the various lands, that it would now command more respect by the general population at large. Right now, all you have is a small community who says, listen, I understand cryptocurrency started out so that it can be outside of the present economic structure or mm. the, what we call fiat system yeah yeah so is it then that if the government that that people now would have more respect for it because the government said listen we now have a hand learn it don't you think so because that would be the mentality of the, the normal man in the street and that is what cryptocurrency is trying to break out of the mindset of people to stop relying Stop believing that an institution really has your best interest at heart. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm just saying it as possible, right? <laughs> uh, and and the fact is is that um, uh, it's very difficult to tax something. How do you tax a, a crypto? Let's say let's say this was my cryptocurrency, and I and it's at valued at fifteen thousand dollars today. And you tax it at fifteen thousand dollars a day, but tomorrow is sixty thousand dollars. What value do you set your tax rate at? And how do you? And or, or next week it comes down to a dollar. 
how can you tax something that is not stable and, and has volatility continually? And that is one of the greatest challenge for them. And they know that for the average person, that scenario gives us the opportunity to earn, to increase, to trade, to grow and, and, and um, hedge and uh, do what we have to do to increase our holdings. But for, for those persons who continually believe in the mantra of institutionalism and centralization, they will be continually dependent on that narrative that you said there, Cliff, for legitimacy. But they will just be continually walking as they are already walking. So it will, it, so therefore it calls for, and I see the time is going, but it, therefore it calls for people to make a shift in their mindset rather than continuing to ping themselves to a defeating, a defeated, diminishing asset class or asset-based system that is built on air. Sorry. So, so I am saying that, I am saying that it is more difficult to shift their minds that we are saying, given how right now there is so much of liberty to do so, yet there is clear manipulation in the market. So imagine where you have a lot of liberty because there's no regulation whatsoever, yet it is easy to manipulate the value of cryptocurrency you now. Yet when the banks and the outside powers decide to say, listen, and the governments say, listen, guys, here what's going on. We're going to allow cryptocurrency to prevail. However, it's going to have to operate within these parameters. And you just alluded to the fact that the Economic Forum really has control virtually over every aspect of our lives. So I, I am now saying that I, I, I don't know how people are going to shift in their mindset because right now they're allowed to do so and they haven't. Yeah, and, 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 and where, where, where the values of, of, of the crypto, crypto market is. And this may sound insensitive. My next statement may sound insensitive, but it's also coming from somebody who tired to trying to share the message and persons not hearing, not heeding, because they have been brainwashed, right? And they've been brainwashed a society that all of us grew up in. We were all exposed to the same system, but somehow we were able to break out of it. And we still, I mean, there's still some connection, but we got, we're getting there. But then before we close, I just want to say this, that sometimes we have a saying, who do hear does yeah. We don't want people to feel. We are trying to feel for them right now. But ultimately, at the end of the day, every man, person will have to stand on their own two feet and make a decision. Just don't say you were not told. Just don't say they didn't tell you. We didn't warn you. We didn't say. We didn't urge you. We didn't call you. We didn't cry on you and tell you. Just don't say that because tonight, you are here in this call and you are here in another opportunity to make that shift. Thank you. I would like to close off by saying I am part of a group of fellows who went to school together. These are guys who are older than I am, however. And they were saying, one of them was saying, listen, when I now entered the school, I used to pay 10 cents for a solo. When I left the school, I was paying 75 cents for the same solo. I do understand how come. Now, years later, he's still saying he do understand how come. So we are in a, it be like the frog in the water being boiled. Are we not aware that it's boiling, boiling, and we don't, we feel it, you know, but we get to the custom that we don't know what to do. Wow, yep. wow, wow, wow. So, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a very, very active and engaging discussion. We hope you will stay tuned to Gael, the Caribbean. We'll be back again uh, next week, same time, same place. We want to thank our co-hosts and also our specially invited guest, uh, Mr. Carlos Gonzalez.
Thank you so much. Uh, we know people have been calling. Uh, call us to get more information on how you can join our one ecosystem. God wish you bless you. Bye bye and take care. One time. Thank you, Carlos. Shots fired. One ecosystem, you know them. We know right now for nobody, but we respect everybody, and we better than everybody. So we will run with anybody. No fear, no better than we. No kind, no better than we. Step on me one and say, one ecosystem to the world, you say. One ecosystem will do something, do something, do something, do something, who no do something, do something. I'm not talking, one ecosystem will do something, do something, do something, do something, uno do something, do something, and no bagal chasing. Hey, hey.